An Aryan brother is without a care. He walks where the weak and heartless won't dare. And if by chance he should stumble or lose control, his brothers are there to help reach his goal. For a worthy brother, no need is too great. He need not ask, fulfillment's his fate. For an Aryan brother, death holds no fear. Vengeance will be his, through his brother still here. For the brotherhood means just what he implies. A brother's a brother, till that brother dies. And if he is loyal, he never lost faith. Greetings and welcome. It's your host, Gabe Morales. We are embarking on a new series of Aryan Brotherhood members over almost six decades. Today, I'll start off with the A last names, as in Abel. Speaking of Abel, the first one I'll address is John Abel, who is an early AB member with CDC number A as an Alpha 77134. John Abel was given BOP number 34887136 and just as today, inmates out of California that are affiliated with various prison gangs often have heavy influences on federal prison yards. For instance, it is said that inmates George Lovell and Ernie Abshar killed a man at USP Leavenworth in 1973 over a drug transaction and that John Abel located. This was said to be an isolated event ordered by the AB, but I understand that they stabbed him, nearly killed him, and they got away with it. Likewise, in 1977 at USP Leavenworth, John Abel put out a contract on John Seymour, which left Seymour a vegetable for life. Nobody was ever charged on that beef either. John Abel was very close to AB shot caller Dallas Scott at Leavenworth, and John Abel was later moved to Marion with many of the other AB shot callers, and I show his house there in 1981. He was released from the feds in February 1990, but then I show got popped in California and was given H number, isn't Henry, 28575. But I show is currently not in custody. In the intro to the Aryan Brotherhood, I briefly discuss Kenny Ektuka, aka Special K, who was a longtime inmate from the Washington Department of Corrections and in fact was the president of the Lifers Club, of which the majority of inmates were white. As I stated previously, Ken Ektuka was actually half Filipino, but he very famously held off prison staff for several days when the Lifers Club was running the Washington State Penitentiary in Walla Walla, Washington. The Lifers Club was responsible for attacking several staff members, as well as planting bombs. And eventually, Kenny was sent to the feds under BOP number 00248-045. When he arrived there, he was greeted by fellow Washington State Aryan Brotherhood member Wayne Bridgewater, and they were very close. Both individuals were schooled by one of the first Aryan Brotherhood members in the federal system, George Harp, as seen in this picture here. It is documented that Kenny killed an inmate named William Stansfield at USP Atlanta on April 28, 1979. He was assisted by an inmate named William Bryan. Evidently, Stansfield was murdered on orders by Aryan Brotherhood shot caller Barry Mills because Stansfield allegedly was stupid enough of stealing heroin from Mills' private stash in his cell. I was told that Kenny Ektuka was made an Aryan Brotherhood member for this hit, but like I said, that status was later questioned. Evidently, Kenny became a foul of Aryan Brotherhood Council person David Sahakian. I believe around the year 2003, he ended up being released from the BOP and sent back to Washington, D.O.C., and currently resides at Stafford Creek, which is a high-security prison in the southwestern part of Washington State. There was Ralph Pirate Ainsworth, who was actually out of Kentucky, but moved to California sometime in the 1960s, and was arrested there and sent to CDC under B number 26737. I show that he was housed at San Quentin in 1972 and was a part of the United White People's Party in 1976. I have notes that he was in St. Louis in 1990, and I'm unsure what happened to him after that. There was Paul Allen, who I mentioned in my first video. I had a picture of Paul Allen, but unfortunately I can't find a lot of my pictures. I'm still searching, though, so hopefully before we get to the Z's, I can find that picture of Paul Allen, but I remember he was noted by the California Gang Task Force as being a very influential member in the Aryan Brotherhood in the early 1970s. There's Marie Cristal Alonso, who was part of the Manson family. My understanding is that Maria Cristal Alonso became a member of the Manson family after meeting Susan Sadie Atkins, who was involved in the massacres committed by Charles Manson family in the 1970s. That I covered in a couple special episodes about Charles Manson. 
Understand that she was the girlfriend of Aryan Brotherhood member Bobby Hedberg, who gifted her to Mexican Mafia honorary godfather Joe Morgan, as seen in this picture here. Also noted in this picture is Aryan Brotherhood member Dennis Connells, who is standing to the left of Joe Morgan. Also in this picture is Mexican Mafia original Eddie Potato Nose Loera and Emmy founder Wero Buff Flores. There was a Jerry Emerson, a.k.a. Baby Boy, who I show was out of the Inland Empire and was affiliated with a skinhead group out of Ontario. I show that he was an Aryan Brotherhood member as well as a Nazi lowrider associate. I show he was first incarcerated on CDC number J as in John 700. I then show that he was picked up by the feds under BOP number 11912-112 and was housed at Lompoc in 2003, but had been released from federal custody by June 2016. I then show that he was reincarcerated in CDC under B numbers in Bravo, T is in Thomas, 7176. And I show is currently at Valley State Prison. There's a Frank Fleetwood Ambrose, who was out of Oakland, but I also show had ties to Washington State as well as the state of Oregon. I show he had a B number of 44413 in the mid-1970s when he was documented as being a member of the Aryan Brotherhood. He then was released on that number but reincarcerated in the late 70s under B number 95139. I also show that he was arrested in Whatcom County in Washington State near the Canadian border in 1976 as well as did time at the Oregon State Penitentiary in 1977. I show he was picked up by the feds and given BOP number 59218-065 and was housed at the ADX shortly after it opened, but was released in May of 2014. I believe he had a brother named Leonard, as he also was out of Oakland and also had a B number of 12692. I show he was also documented as being affiliated with the Aryan Brotherhood in the mid-1970s. He got off that B number, but then came back with T numbers and Thomas, 15938, and I show was housed at High Desert State Prison in the year 2001, but currently shows not in custody. There was Christopher Anderson, who I show was born in the state of Oregon and committed a murder in Salem, which is the state capital there. I don't show that he did any CDC time, but I do know that he did BOP time in McNeil Island in 1966 under BOP number. 27178-138. I show that he was also involved in a riot at the Oregon State Penitentiary with an offshoot of the Aryan Brotherhood called the Host of Bahala, started by Steve Kessler, who did do time in California, but had to be shipped out of state to Oregon. I show that Christopher Anderson was housed at Lompoc in 1981 and was at the ADX in 1998, but I'm unsure what happened to him after that. There was a Donald, a.k.a. Brains Anderson, at the Moreno Valley. I show he was an Aryan Brotherhood member in the 1970s under B number 28052. I show he was released on that number, but came back into custody later on under P number St. Paul 83659. And I show was still documented as being Aryan Brotherhood by the California Gang Task Force in the year 2005. There's Ronnie Deadeye Anderson out of San Jose. I show he was an Aryan Brotherhood member in the early 1970s under B number 3307. I show that he was part of the United White People's Party in the mid-1970s. One of the leaders of that organization was David Country Chance, who last I checked was an Aryan Brotherhood Commission member and has been a member way back into the 1970s. There was Richard Rhino Anderson, who was an AB member at Folsom Prison in the 1970s, as seen here in this picture with later AB Commission members Barry Mills and T.D. Bingham. Understand when he got to the feds, Rhino ran into some problems and burnt the brothers on some dope. Thus, he was put on the hit list when he was in the federal system under BOP number 75170-012. Understand that he was stabbed by Ricky Rose at the Orange County Jail in 1983, but survived that attack. He then was killed by the AB's John Greshner and AB associate Ronnie Joe Criswell finished him off at the BOP in Leavenworth on October 6, 1983, which was a case that was mentioned in the AB RICO cases. There's Jimmy Ray Snake Andrews at Alongo, 
I show he was residing in Long Beach in 1975. I understand he was incarcerated when he was 18 years old in CDC in 1968. I show he was released and then came back into custody in the early 1980s under C numbers in Charles. 51452. I then show he was released on that, but then came back with E numbers in Edward. 79682. And I show was housed at Tehachapi in 1991. But I show is currently not in custody. There's David Angel Appleton, who's out of Valencia. I show he was an Aryan Brotherhood member in the mid-1970s with B number 55871. And I show was housed at CIM in 1976. There was a Desmond Taz Arbuckle out of Orange County. He was born in 1965 and I believe had a C or D number, but got out on that and was popped by the feds under BOP number 85171-012. I show he was housed at the Federal Phoenix facility in 1988 and at Lompoc in 1993. I show he was released, but then had a parole violation in 2003. I believe he was housed at Richard J. Donovan in 2005 under V numbers in Victor 99089. He then was released on that, but sent back to the feds and released in July of 2007. He then was rearrested in California under B number as in Bravo, I as in India, 4441, three fours. And I show is currently housed at Sentinel State Prison. There is Ricky Archer. I show with ties out of Modesto as well as Fresno. I show him being documented as an, being an Aryan Brotherhood member in the Federal Bureau of Prisons when he had number 47211-079. I show that he was housed at the ADX in 1995 and at Marion in 2003. He then was relocated to Tucson facility in 2024 and is not scheduled for release until the year 2038. There's Wayne Archuleta, who I show was out of either Concord or Hanford. I show him being an AB associate in the late 1980s under D number 58485. I then show that he was housed at Old Folsom in October of 1989, and I had him at New Folsom in November of 1989 through 1990. I then showed that he was released, but came back under P numbers in Paul 20576, and was documented by CDC as being Aryan Brotherhood in the year 2005. There's Donald A.K. Dragon Arnold, who I show was an Aryan Brotherhood member in the 1970s, I believe with a partial B number of 3724. He may have been housed at San Quentin in 1972, and I believe was a martial artist, thus the name Dragon. There was a James Creeper Arnold out of the South Los Angeles County area. I show that he was an Aryan Brotherhood member in the early 1970s under B number 30156. I show that he was housed at San Quentin in 1972 and was housed there for multiple 211s. I then show that he paroled in August of 1974, and I'm unsure what happened to him after that. And then we have Todd Asker, who was out of Coco County. I am very familiar with this individual. I show that he entered CDC in 1982 with C numbers in Charles, 58191, and was involved in the homicide in 1987 of Dennis Murphy. As I recall, Murphy was stabbed in his cell while Todd and I think another AB inmate named Tanner assisted in stabbing him to death. Understand that Murphy was stabbed 26 times for failing to give the Aryan Brotherhood a cut of his methamphetamine business. I believe that hit was ordered by Blue Norris. I also recall that there was a mattress held up. As I recall, that happened in New Folsom B1 unit, which was a very active unit with multiple Aryan Brotherhood members and Mexican Mafia members. And I will mention that unit several times as I go through this series. Understand that Ashker was shot in the wrist and sued CDC. We had him in the violence control unit in 1990 at New Folsom. Understand that Asker called fellow Aryan Brotherhood hitman Paul Cornfred Schneider as a witness in 1991 at the Sacramento County Courthouse, whereby Cornfred stabbed Asker's attorney, Philip Cozens. The weapon was made from a nine-inch spoon fashioned from a soup ladle adorned with runic writing. As I recall, Cornfred stabbed Cozens four times while trying to kill him for not being a better attorney for Todd. It is my understanding that Cornfed was charged in that case, but to the dismay of me and several other COs, it was decided that it was too dangerous to bring him back to Sacramento County Court, and the judge actually came to a bedrock cell where he was housed at 
whereby corn-fed pet guilty to those charges in exchange for two pepperoni pizzas and a liter of Pepsi that he and Ashker shared. Now, I have no way to prove this, but I've heard this from multiple reliable sources, and I believe it to be true. When I protested this to some of my supervisors that it set a bad example, they stated that it would probably cost hundreds of thousands of dollars for security and for another lengthy trial to try it. Cornfed. The warden and the Sacramento County prosecutors decided that the two pizza, one liter of Pepsi deal was a pretty good deal. And then I kind of understood. Ashker was also involved in the infamous in the hostilities agreement, where he was able to convince multiple prison gang leaders to sign off on the cord that resulted in the releasing many, many dangerous offenders from the security housing units. That policy is still in effect, although the way it's going, after all these shot callers are out on the main lines, it may soon return back to the way it was. But a lot of that is up to the judicial system as well as CDC administrators. Understand that Ashker got in a little bit of trouble as I believe he was given paperwork to go through the debriefing process that he signed. Later on, I understand that he said he was on psych medication and was under distress when that happened and that he actually had no intentions of debriefing, whatever the case. He is currently housed at the California Men's Colony near San Luis Obispo. And then there was Danny Atwell. I'm not sure if he's an Aryan Brotherhood member or associate, but he ended up burning the ABs for dope and I understand was killed for it by Edgar Snail Hevley and Thomas Silverstein at Leavenworth in 1978. And so I know I went kind of quick on a lot of those guys. Again, I apologize, I don't have pictures for everybody, but I felt those individuals should be mentioned and maybe they will jar somebody's memory, especially for some of you old-time ex-cons. Once again, if I skipped over anybody, hit me up in the comment section or at gangpreventionservices at gmail.com and I'll see what I could look up on them. I'm still seeking pictures of any old Aryan Brotherhood members. I have a lot of good ones from CDC and the BOP. But I know somebody out there has some real gems. I would take good care of them if you trust sending those to me. I forgot to mention in the introduction, there's another resource that you might be interested in. Quite a few years ago, I did an interview with Doug Widely, Police One. And that video is currently available on corrections1.com if you plug in white gangs. It's about a five-minute video, but it's a good overview of white gangs in case you're interested. I hope you enjoyed this first episode of Aaron Hood Members and Associates over almost six decades now. This is your host, Gabe Morales, signing off for gangsters, cops, and politicians. An Aryan brother is without a care. He walks where the weak and heartless won't dare. And if by chance he should stumble or lose control, his brothers are there to help reach his goal. For a worthy brother, no need is too great. He need not ask, fulfillment's his fate. For an Aryan brother, death holds no fear. Vengeance will be his, through his brother still here. For the brotherhood means just what he implies. A brother's a brother, till that brother dies. And if he is loyal and never lost faith, in each brother's heart there will always be a place. So a brother I am, and will always be, even after my life is taken away from me. I'll lie down content, knowing I stood, head held high, walking proud in the brotherhood. People that are older know what time it is, but it's just business. Yeah.